This lesson is going to show you a couple of magic things. First, how to use x equals negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry, and hence the equation in vertex form if you want, and how to find the equation of a quadratic in factored form. So let's take a quick review of the equation for the quadratic formula, which you probably have all memorized by now. So we had, oh, I'm going write up here, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing over 2a. Don't forget the whole thing part. So we learned yesterday, or in the last lesson, about the discriminant. The discriminant was hiding right here under this radical sign. This is my discriminant. So d equals b squared minus 4ac. Okay, don't take the radical sign with it. The discriminant is just this little piece. You've taken it out of this formula. And if d was less than 0, then you had no solutions. No solution, no x-intercepts, no zeros, no roots of an equation. If d was equal to 0, you had one solution. And if d is greater than 0, then you have two solutions. Okay, now hopefully you've understood that clearly. The reason being that if it was negative, you can't take the square root of a negative number. If it was 0, then you would be left with just minus b over 2a. And if it's greater than 0, you would have two solutions plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and minus it. So that gives you two solutions. Okay, now there's another little very magical part of this equation, and that is this part right here, minus b over 2a. And I'm going to show you why this happens to be so magical. So when I use x equals minus b over 2a, this is going to give me, gives me the x-coordinate of the vertex. So as you know, the x-coordinate of the vertex is also called the axis of symmetry if you make it x equals 2, so um, the axis of symmetry and then once you have the axis of symmetry then you can find, or the x-coordinate of the vertex, you can find the y-coordinate of the vertex simply by plugging it in and I, I will do an example of that in a minute. So why does this give me the axis of symmetry? So I'm going to do a really quick little calculation over here as to why x equals minus b over 2a is the axis of symmetry, okay? So let's say I ended up with this in the, my final line after I simplified everything. And I got minus 2 um, plus 10 over 4, okay? So this was plus 10 was all this part. And so I would have two solutions. So let's solve this one. I would get um, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Or, and I have x equals minus 2 minus 10 over 4. So that's minus 12 divided by 4 is minus 3. So that means that if I put this on um, an axis here, and let's say I had... Um, um, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, it didn't plan that very well, and plus 2. And I wanted to know where the axis of symmetry is. So you know that it's going to be halfway between minus 3 and 2. So minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 divided by 2 is minus 1 half, right? Minus 1 half. So the axis of symmetry is going to be right here minus one half. And look what happens if we just did minus b over 2a. So here's my, here's my part right here that I've already plugged it in. 
And what's minus 2 over 4? Minus a half. So whether or not you understood what I did here or not, I think it's, it's quite clear that minus b over 2a is going to give me the equation of the axis of symmetry, or I could use it as the x-coordinate of a vertex to put the equation into vertex form. So let's say you really had a hard time with um, completing the square, you can use that as your, um, another method to find the equation in vertex form. So let's try an equation here. I'm going to give you this one here. So let's say we had y equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. And I ask you for the vertex. Well, you know the vertex, you can't read it off this standard form of a function. So if I use x equals minus b over 2a, and I plug in, so my b is minus 6 and my a is 2. So minus minus 6 is 6 over 2 times 2, 6 over 4. So that's 3 halves. So that means my axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 3 halves. So I'm going to do a quick sketch over here just to show you. So three halves. Three halves is one and a half. Okay, so there's my x equals three halves. It's my axis of symmetry. So the vertex, if I want to know the vertex now, I'm going to plug in three halves into this equation to find out what the y coordinate would be when x is three halves. So when x equals 3 halves, y equals 2 times 3 halves squared minus 6 times 3 halves plus 4. Okay, what's 2 times 3? Well, 3 halves squared is 9 quarters. So I have 2 times 9 quarters. And minus 6, this is uh, minus 9 plus 4. So that's uh, 2 times 9 quarters is 9 over 2, which is 4.5. Minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5. And I'm going to get minus 1 half or minus 0.5. Okay, so that means that the vertex the vertex is going to be at minus a half. So right here, vertex is three halves for my x coordinate and minus one half for my y coordinate. And if I wanted you to write this in vertex form then from here, I would say, oh, well, that y equals, now remember we have ax minus h squared plus K. My a value is given here. It doesn't change. If it's a is 2 here, it's still 2 here. So I put that in, 2, and I have x minus h, so minus 3 halves squared plus k minus a half. So there I've converted the, um, I've converted the equation from standard form to vertex form just by knowing where this axis of symmetry is by using x equals minus b over 2a. Okay, so let's take a look at another equation and we're going to this time put this into vertex form. I'm going to show you how to complete the square with it and I'm going to show you the y equals or x equals minus b over 2a way of doing it. So let's put that one over here. So to complete the square, remember you factor out the three out of the first two terms. Then you take half the coefficient of x. So half of four x is two. Two squared is four. Add four, subtract four, minus one. And then I would have three x plus 
2 squared. 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Minus 1 more is minus 13. Okay, so that's completing the square. So your other option, if that's not something you like doing, you can put in minus b. So b is 12, so it's going to be minus 12 over 2a, and I get minus 2. So look, there it goes. Because remember, this formula is x minus h squared. If I plug in the minus 2, I would have x plus 2. Okay, so when, when x is minus 2, what's y equal to? So we plug in minus 2, 12 times minus 2, minus 1, and that's going to give me 12, minus 24, minus 1. So minus 24 would be minus 12, minus 1 more is minus 13. So minus 2, minus 13 is the vertex. Okay, so that's why I wanted to show you this because it's kind of easier if you have trouble with completing the square. So then your vertex form is just y equals, your a was already given, it's a 3. So I put the 3 there, x minus h, so that's plus 2 squared minus 13. Okay, so that's another option or a different way of finding the, um, the vertex form. Okay, so now that you've got the vertex, um, let's use the same equation here, and we're going to find the zeros. Okay, so this is, this is the vertex. We've got the vertex, and now we're going to find the, um, the zeros of the function, or the x-intercepts. So with this equation, we're using the same equation now. Um, you should know, first of all, check to see if you could factor it product of minus 3 sum of 12 and no that's not something that's going to work very nicely so I'm going to use the quadratic formula so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac the whole thing's over 2a my a is 3 my b is 12 and my c is minus 1 so plugging it in we get minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 1 all over 2 times 3. Okay, so that's minus 12 plus or minus the square root of, so 12 squared is 144 and to that I'm adding 12, so that's 156 over 6 and if you do that, you would get approximately my two solutions. I'm not going to do that all up for you, but I get 0 0.083, and that's approximately minus 4.08. I should have had three decimals for that. I'm going to have three for that one. Okay, so all I have to do now is I could sketch this, right, because I have everything I need to know about this quadratic. So I'm going to put it on an axis here. And I have a vertex of minus 2 and minus 13. I screwed that up, didn't I? I should have put this axis way up here. It's going to be minus 13. Okay, let's just put it up here. So minus 2, 1, 2, and let's say minus 13 is right here. And I'm going to put on my point, minus 2 and minus 13. It's concave up. My zeros are 0 0.083, so that's less than 1. So let's say it's right here. And my other one is at minus 4. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, just past 4, right there. And so my... This was supposed to be minus 2, right? I'm over a little far. Let's move it over here a bit, just so it looks a little nicer. Okay, so there we go. We've got this beautiful parabola. So we found the zeros right here, or the x-intercepts, and we had the vertex up here. Okay, so that's a little 
a little bit of work for you to figure out. Now we're going to do one more thing in this lesson today and that is to find the equation of a quadratic in factored form. So in factored form, let's get the two formats going on here. We'll write them all three. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c and that's what we call standard form. These are all different formats of a quadratic standard form. Vertex form you already know. A x minus h squared plus k. Vertex form. And the last one, <clears throat> we've done a lot of factoring. x minus s, x minus t. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so this is what we call factored form. Now if you're given the standard form, all you can tell is a vertical stretch and the C gives you the y-intercept. When you have the vertex form, you have the vertical stretch or compression. All the transformations are on here, right? This tells you the shift left and right. This tells you the shift up and down. In factored form, these values give you the x-intercepts and this is going to give you the vertical stretch or compression. So let's do an example. I'm going to say a quadratic has zeros. So we have zeros that are, mm, let's see, minus 2 and 5. And a y-intercept of minus 3. Find the equation in factored form. Find the equation in factored form. Okay, so we did finding the equation in vertex form before. So this one is going to be the factored form. And we're going to look at why do we need another point? So I think we kind of talked about this when we did vertex form. But if I have two zeros, if I have the zeros like this, so say that, that was minus two and five, I could draw so many different parabolas through these two points, right? I could make really big ones, I could make skinny ones like this, I could make them long. And so, as I tell my students, it makes quite a monster. So when you have given, been given another point on the parabola, that helps define the shape and that way you can find the a value. Okay, so with this question here, we have a y-intercept. So we have zeros of minus 2 and 5 and a y-intercept of minus 3. So using this equation, a x minus s, x minus t, I want to know what s is equal to, what t is equal to, what's x equal to, and what's y equal to. So if I have all of those, I can solve for the a value, and that's going to give me my shape. So they tell me the zeros are minus 2 and 5, and I have a y-intercept of minus 3. So y is minus 3. What's x equal to when I'm on the y-axis? If I'm here at minus 3, the coordinates would be 0 minus 3. That's something that sometimes students mix up because they don't know what to put in for x. Actually, when it's a y-intercept, it's the easiest one to work with. Okay, so let's plug in everything we know. Minus 3 is a, x is 0. Minus s, minus minus 2, right? Minus minus. I say minus minus, you say plus 0, minus 5. Okay, so minus 3 is equal to a times, so this is going to be 2, and this is minus 5, and 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. So a is going to be equal to 3 over 10. Okay, so now I'm almost finished. All I have to do, they ask for the equation in factored form, so I'm going to plug everything I know back into here. 
you leave the x's and the y's alone, right? Because those are your input output values for your function. So that means that y is going to be equal to 3 tenths x minus s, so minus 2, minus minus 2 is plus 2, and t is 5, so x minus 5. And there's your factored form from two zeros and a point. And that's the end of today's lesson. It was kind of long, and I hope you learned something, and good luck with your grade 10 math.